we search more and more for more and more things every day <laughs> and we take it for granted and at the same time um, we don't know who is interrogating what we're searching for. If you look back on the uh, so-called AOL debacle, things that people searched for were released in a kind of very large scale database and it was thought that these searches could not be traced because obviously they were anonymous. It, it of course took very little time to figure out who the people were that had been searching for this information and that can be done by kind of identifying where you live and what you search for and matching that up against all sorts of other data. Online spaces such as Second Life or uh, large-scale massively multiplayer games are a really interesting example of anonymity, privacy and how those can be compromised. Some researchers have gotten access to massive databases for figuring out who's doing what where, who's playing with whom, how they go into guilds, who's talking to whom, what are they doing, are they forming factions and so on. For a social scientist, this is wonderful. This is as if we had CCTV cameras everywhere in London and could track your every move and say who did what with whom for how long and so on. So a wonderful source. One way to see that, uh, and this argument has been made by many, is to simply say, well, it's all online. I mean, anyone can come in there, anyone can observe you, anyone can watch what you're doing. It's all on the web. It's all public. But from a researcher point of view, I face certain quandaries, because I think if I can look at certain forms of behavior, and if I, let's say, publish about them, then I may be revealing, even if I do it inadvertently, somebody's identity. When I went into a church and I studied what people were doing in that particular church, they were having service, they were praying together and so on. And certain people were saying, well, actually, I'd like to confess to the convocation of avatars. You know, I did this, I might have committed adultery, I might have been doing certain things that you know, I wouldn't confess to my family in real life, but here I am in, in the virtual church confessing it. And yes, it's all there, it's public, it's on the web. Should I as a researcher divulge it? But this comes back to contextual integrity, I think. Or is that a particular context which is there for praying or in the case of Second Life for special interest groups to uh, get together and have certain discussions about things that may be sensitive in one context but not in another? These are, uh, again, cases where the internet raises certain new things and I think what brings us new ethical dilemmas and I think there are now ways in which we can find out what people are searching for and we as searchers may not be aware precisely of just how anonymous or not anonymous that my searches are. Researchers or companies or others are watching and they're watching in a kind of Orwellian uh, space.